the kimono wrap is a gorgeous little wrap top made with buttons and loops that make this kimono wrap easy to put on and take off your young one. It could be made in single knit, double knit, soft merino blend, soft fleece or a textured knit. It's a great second layer. Pattern pieces. For the kimono you need two fronts on the straight grain, two sleeves on the straight grain, a back on a fold and bias binding strips. Cutting out the kimono wrap you need to put the back on the fold of your fabric, cut closely to the pattern piece especially around the curves of the armhole and the neck and make sure you put in the pattern markings such as the back armhole two notches and the centre back. For the front, we're laying it down on the straight grain, we're cutting two out, pin it in place, cut closely around it as well. We've got a little triangle on the front edge and cut carefully around those curves and notch in your markings for your sleeve. And cutting out the sleeve, got two on the straight grain, cut carefully around the sleeve head and put your markings in the front, the back and the shoulder and then we need to cut some bias binding out on a 45 degree angle to the salvage, about a 5 centimetre strip. We're going to start with the shoulder seams. Our right side's facing. We're going to pin the front shoulder to the back shoulder on both sides. We're sewing the seams from the neck to the armhole opening so we need to have the point of our pins facing the neck. Because this is knit, knit fabric we're going to use the zigzag stitch 3mm length, 3mm width to sew our seams. Back stitch to begin with and back stitch at the end of the seam to secure the seam and trim our threads when we finish. Just keeps it nice and tidy. And so we're going to press it with the shoulder seam towards the back. Right, the neck opening. The first thing we do is fold the vertical edge of the front under one and a half centimetres, pin in place, and we stay stitch both that and the neck of the kimono. Next thing we do is join the two uh, bias binding pieces together if you need to, and you do them on a 45 degree angle because it lessens the bulk of the seam. Okay, so what we're going to do now is attach the binding to the neck edge. We start at the centre back and we stretch the binding slightly. So we might have about 4 centimetres of binding and we stretch it not to its limit but just slightly and we pin along this whole seam. To attach this binding to the neck edge we're going to use zigzag stitch. And you can either do it at 1 centimetre seam allowance or with the foot right on the edge of the fabric. It depends how wide you want that binding to be. So remember as we're sewing this, the only thing you're stretching is the binding. You're not stretching the front or the back fabric of the kimono. Back stitch at the beginning and the end of your seams. Be careful going over the shoulder seams as they can be a little bit bulky and keep pulling out the bulk of your garment from under your seam. And we're going to clip this every one to two centimetres where it's quite curved. For example around the back neck and a little bit further elsewhere. Now the next thing we're going to do is fold over the front edge of the binding parallel or flush with the front edge and we're going to tuck in a piece of ribbon and this will be like a button loop over our button. So we need it to go around the diameter of the button, so measure it around the button and pin in place for that width, it's kind of like a buttonhole width. And then we're going to zigzag that down within the seam allowance. 
so that when we fold the binding over the fabric, over that seam allowance, we hide that ribbon and the ribbon sewing down within this binding. So once we've attached the ribbon on both ends, then we pin down our bias binding, just like we did with our easy neck if you've already done that. I'm going to use a twin needle because at the same time it neatens and holds down our fabric a little bit further down the front and it looks very professional. So if you're not sure about a twin needle, have a look in the glossary to find out how that works. And we're going to sew the binding in place with the twin needle. You can do it with a zigzag or the running stitch if you want. And when we've gone all the way around, backstitched at the beginning and the end, and trimmed our threads, we trim away the excess binding on the wrong side. And we also need to top stitch the front edge and trim that before we do the hem. And then we need to press it. Armhole seam. We're going to sew two rows of gathering or stay stitch the length, longest length to fit the sleeve into the kimono wrap. So you do this within the one centimetre seam allowance. I like to do one with the foot right on the edge of the fabric and then the next one only one or two millimetres away. With the right sides facing we attach the sleeve to the body of the kimono at the shoulder, the front marking and the side seams and the back marking. And once you've done that you can find out how much of the top of the sleeve you need together and spread that out evenly over the sleeve head which is within the armhole seam. Then pin in between all those pins to make sure your fabrics are even on the edge and when you sew no part of the seam is going to be less than a centimetre or more. So we're all pinned and ready to go and we're going to sew this seam with zigzag stitch and we're going to clip it so that the curves can sit nicely in the finished product. Back stitch to begin and end your seam. And when we've finished sewing our seam, we'll repeat it for the other side, the other sleeve, and you take out the gathering lines. Now if you've made it so that you haven't sewn over the gathering lines, that's very easy. Otherwise, just take your time, use your seam ripper to take out that gathering stitch line. Try not to undo the zigzag seam. So we just clip every centimetre or two centimetres on less curved areas of the armhole seam. And we're going to press the seam towards the sleeve on both sides. Okay, we're going to do the sleeve hem before we do the side seams because it can be quite a small sleeve hem and it's better off to sew it first and incorporate that hem within the side seam. First thing we need to do is fold the sleeve edge to the wrong side with a 1.5 cm hem, pin it, and top stitch it on the right side with zigzag running stitch or twin needle. If you use the twin needle to do the bias binding, I think that it's great to do the same with both the sleeve hems and the lower hem. Or if you did it with zigzag, do them all with zigzag, etc. If you've done it with a twin needle when you're finished, and trimmed off your threads, you need to trim away the excess fabric and press your seam side seam. With the kimono, to do the side seams, we're putting the front and the back together at the side seam and the sleeve folded in half, and we're pinning it together. I always start with the armhole seam then the lower edge or the sleeve cuff. Because we've already done the hem on the sleeve cuff we have to make sure it's very close and aligned when sewing. To do the side seam once we've pinned it all together we're doing it with zigzag stitch and as you get up to the armhole seam just take your time because it can be quite bulky. If you have difficulty getting a nice aligned hem for the sleeve 
and you need to unpick it. Start at the sleeve edge to sew that first and then come up to where you've unpicked it to. You only need to unpick it about 5 centimetres. It can be difficult to get it all tidy and lined up. With the knit fabric you can actually give it a bit of a pull to get it right. And once you've sewn the side seam you actually need to make sure that the side seam is tacked down at the cuff edge so it doesn't sort of hang loose and annoy your daughter or son and you tack it in place with a straight stitch just backwards and forwards five or six stitches and tidy that up and then we're going to press the side seam towards the back Right, we're on to the hem. Now if you haven't already um, done the front seam, you can actually do a little trick and make it nice and mitered corner by folding the 1.5cm front facing back and sewing a 1.5cm one hem, only about 1.5cm long. Uh, you clip the corner and turn it inside out and you get a nice straight corner. If not, you just pin that front seam front edge down and sew it with the same top stitch you've been doing and once you've sewn that seam and trimmed it you then fold a 1.5 centimeter hem along the lower edges pin it on the right side and again top stitch it with the same stitch you did to begin with so using your ruler make sure you measure your hem all the way along don't guess. It's best to spend a couple of minutes to pin it nicely to be able to get a really good professional looking hem in your end product. So once you've finished your seam, trim your excess fabric and press it from the wrong side. And then we'd be ready so our fastenings, our two buttons onto our garment. So pressing it from the wrong side, making it nice and neat. Fastenings, we're going to put two buttons on our kimono. The outside one, we even up the hems and take the ribbon to the side seam and we put a pin in to mark it. Where the loop will be and the inside we're going to take the inside ribbon front to the side seam and put a pin in and then what we do is we choose the button that we're going to have we've obviously measured it for the ribbon and we're going to use double thread to sew the button to the outside so our double thread is where it's gone through the eye of the hand needle and the two threads are evened up and you tie a knot at the end. You thread the needle through your fabric and I use the side seam as a um, thicker area to sew the button to. It means it's a, bit, a much stronger button placement. So I go in from the back and we go in and out of the buttonholes at least three times to secure it and once we've secured the button we tie a knot on the wrong side, on the inside of the garment and hide the facing within the side seam area and we do the same for the opposite side for the inside button do exactly the same procedure making sure that our button is securely tied in 